Good morning and welcome to The Morning Burrito. I'm Michael. I'm Eric. And it is episode 22. 22. You remember when you were 22 years old? Hmm. You should. It wasn't that long ago. It's 15 years, man. Yeah. It's a long time ago. I remember when I was 22. It was way more than 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. 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 22 is a good year. When you were 22, I was... Uh... <laughs> okay, you don't need to go down that path. I was born, but I was little, I think. <laughs> when did you graduate high school? Uh, 87. Yeah, I was three when you... Yeah, yeah. So good. that would have been 91, so I would have been eight years old? Seven years? Seven years old. There you go. Seven. Wow. Good. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> glad we do it together. All right, so we are on air, and uh, we had a great time last week. Uh, t- what did we talk about? Oh, that was so last week ago. Ghosts. Ghosts. That's right. Yeah, ghosts. ghosts. That was a good. That was a good one. Um, so this week we are going to uh, jump in to a discussion that um, probably could get us in trouble if we uh, tell stories that are <laughs> too personal. <laughs> We're going to change some names today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The names. How's that go? The the names and identities have been changed, changed to protect for the protection of Peter, <laughs> their people. Yeah. So, uh, hey, today, but, you know, but seriously though, look, I, I'm like looking at the monitor and I got like this glare thing going you move the light so close today you look great man you have like a, you like have like the pregnant woman's glow I, it, <laughs> really oh man okay Here, hold on we could we could change this watch this well i feel like i got like this negative look i mean so we got we got filters so we can do this live on air and i, I i'd can, like a little more tannage on my there you go left side oh that looks way, way better i mean not that i'm vain or anything but there you go Oh, is that a little better. That's a little better. Yeah. See how cool is that? Yeah. I can I can change. All Did you that. even change anything? Oh uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about the three minutes that happen oh. for a pastor before we yep. start a service, and the kinds of things. Uh, some are funny. Some are not so funny. Uh, that ha- the things that are said to us or done right before a service, and they can very easily knock us off of our game before we do what we do on a Sunday morning. Yep. So we might be talking about some of you today. Yeah, so if you're watching and you've been at one of our churches or you're at Hermnaz, there may be a story about you. Just FYI. And just know that we're telling you this because we love you. Yes. Some of the stories are funny, and that's okay. Some of them are heartbreaking. We're not, we're not laughing at you. We're laughing with you. These are some of our lunch conversations with our families. <laughs> Staff meetings. Can you believe... Okay, so let's 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 jump right in and have some fun here. So, uh, what is the craziest funny thing that anyone has ever told you three minutes before a service? Um, probably. Okay, so I'm walking. I'm literally walking down the aisle. Y- y- the music is like about to end. I'm watching the countdown timer. I have like. 20 seconds before I do the the welcome and this person comes up and uh pastor I don't know what to do what do you think I should do about this boil I have right here and they pick up their arm and they're actually showing me this boil. they actually pull their sleeve down like this and go and I'm thinking seriously as if you're a doctor, like, I don't know, lance that thing. I, uh, I, I don't know. I, you just, yeah. Go get some drawing salve. I, I've, I've been told when I worked in the pharmacy that drawing salve works. I don't I even mean, know what drawing salve is. Just the idea of not even looking at the boil, but just somebody's armpit right before you go up on stage. It's like, I look at that, and it's like, well, good morning. Praise the Lord. I uh, I had a, kind of a similar story. I haven't had a ton of the funny stuff. A lot of my pre-service stories. The, okay, so let me back up. I, I said this before when we kind of mentioned that we were going to talk about this. I don't get nearly as many stories, at least I haven't, over the course of my career. Because being a worship pastor, 90% of the time, I'm like a chicken with my head cut off before service. So I'm running here. I'm running there. I'm trying to get things set up and prepared and make sure the the team is all ready to go my tech team's ready all that stuff so most of the time people think just leave me alone just because don't bother him. just don't bother the guy um because i look like i'm you know scatterbrain um but i i will say th- this one time um and if they're watching i really apologize that i'm sharing this story i'm not using your name so nobody will know it's you except for you and me 
Uh, but <laughs> this lady walks up to me before service, and this did not happen at Hermes, by the way. See, we can't keep saying that because now everybody's going to be going like, really? Yeah, I don't, I don't want them, our yeah. people looking around yeah. and be like, who told Pastor Let's Michael Let's just say this? it all happens at another church. <laughs> yeah, for, well, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. Well, that might be a lie. <laughs> it just happens at church. How's that? Yeah. Okay. So, so this lady walks up to me and she says, "Pastor Michael, I, I, I have a question." <laughs> and you know, as pastors, sometimes when somebody says, "I have a question," you know, something you you don't want to answer is coming. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and so she says, "Well, Pastor, ah, for four days I've had really bad diarrhea. <laughs> four days straight." And I don't feel sick, but I just, I've had really bad diarrhea. <laughs> Do you think I should see the doctor? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> like, or change your diet. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm not a doctor. So <laughs> yeah, go see a doc. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I mean, man. what's the what's the normal length of diarrhea? Like, I've never had diarrhea for four days. I don't know. I don't know if that's normal. Uh, I, I suppose that's not normal. I, so I, I you probably so. should see a I doc. Think so. <laughs> I just couldn't believe that. Like, I I was probably late twenties, early thirties when this happened. So, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, why are you asking me? I have no idea. Yeah, that's that's bad. It was gross too. It was bad. I had just eaten a donut, so I was already kind of like <laughs> getting the hurls, you know, like <laughs> that'll do it. <sighs> it's amazing that people think that they they can just come to a pastor and just blah. but they do. But I mean, they do. You know, and then, you know, you get the the silly questions of you know, uh, especially as a worship pastor, I get this all the time. Are you doing any hymns today? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I get the questions of, hey, can you tell can you tell the music pastor to do some hymns today? <laughs> hey, you know what, though? On Sunday. I know you I did. did several. You did several. So, yeah. You did good. Just FYI, if anyone's listening for Armour Nass, I do do. <laughs> you did. You said do do. <laughs> I did. Just after the diary I, comment. Yeah. I do hymns. Uh, we do hymns at, at this church. But yeah, I mean, that one's a pretty common one. I've also gotten the uh, <laughs> every church. There's been somebody who said something to the effect of, can we make it louder or can we make it softer? Right. It, right. There's there's always people on both sides and they will tell you everybody's a sound engineer at the church. Everybody knows exactly what we need. Not understanding that it's already preset. <laughs> You know, yeah. can't change anything for today, but, um, you know, I, I think, I think one of those things that people come at us with is, is they're not entering worship on a Sunday morning, like we're supposed to, we're not focused. Sure. And, and so, so here I am, I'm trying to be the, the, the pastor, whether it was as a, as a, a staff guy or lead pastor trying to be out with the people, right. To, uh, shake your hand, say good morning, love your babies, you know, figure out how your week was. Um, and you have these passing conversations <laughs> because, well, pastor, we never see you. Uh, we never get a chance to talk to you. We never get a chance to shake your hand. So right. we are out there. We're trying to let you do that to us. Right. We're trying to have this passing relationship. And then you throw your boils and diarrhea at us. <laughs> and we're supposed to get up and present the God-given message that's laid on our heart, either through, in your case, worship, or my case, teaching. And it's like, sometimes you just have to shut the door, close the gate, smile and nod, and move on. Yeah, and you know, sometimes sometimes our, our people... Um, at our churches. And if you're a pastor and you're listening to this, you know exactly what I'm about to say is true. Um, people are so busy in their lives that they, they forget that, you know, we, we are more than happy. If you make an appointment and want to get together with us, we'll, we'll, we'll make time for you during the week, but they want those appointments to happen three minutes before service, three minutes before. So service. they can come with these big, huge, massive problems and things that they need us to counsel them through. I I don't have the time to think what I'm, I'm what I'm supposed to say here. We're not focused on it. And to give you the actual time of day to to really help you in what you need help with, whether it's finances or, you know, relationship stuff or job or whatever. 
<laughs> we're not miracle workers. Like I can't wave well, a wand and make it go away on a Sunday just morning. Just being able to to tell people like, hey, call me, shoot me a text, shoot me a note. I'm a very easy guy to get a hold of. Right. Um, and let's talk about this d- during the week. Um, you know, one thing that always comes up is, hey, pastor, what are you doing on Tuesday? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's I'm preaching. I'm I'm on this wheel. Right. I, I'm like, let, let me schedule appointments three minutes before I go to my right sermon. Right. And and I get really. You don't know what you're doing on Tuesday. How about Wednesday? Can you do Thursday? Listen, I don't know what I'm doing like for lunch today. So <laughs> I'm just trying to get through this message that a lot of times we don't want to preach. <laughs> I mean. Sure. You know, I mean, that's, I mean, God tells us, hey, we're supposed to do this. And sometimes we don't, we don't, well, sometimes do when we speak, you know, things are being pointed, you know, the thumbs pointing back at us when we preach things. So talking to ourselves all the time. It's, it's hard for us sometimes. I mean, this is something just <laughs> getting inside a pastor's head for a moment. Um, you know, there, there's music that I don't want to do. <laughs> like, there, there are songs I cannot there's stand. There's music I don't want you that, to do. That I do because it matters to people in our churches. Right. And I do that music for them. Uh, and God, right? But I, it's not my favorite. It's not something I want to do. Um, you know, if I were, if it were my, if I had my druthers, I'd be bouncing all over the stage, playing an electric guitar, and rocking out every Sunday in spandex, um, <laughs> like David Bowie, <laughs> Sammy Hagar, oh, and man. Van Halen. Oh. Uh, no, but I mean, when we go to preach, um, oftentimes God has laid stuff on our hearts that's just as hard for us to hear and to, to speak yeah. as it is for you to hear. Us speak, and we're trying to be sensitive in how we we say things. Or if you're of the, I got to be uh, PC about things. Sure. Which, yeah. I mean, I try to be, but it's not really like it's not for fighting. For yeah, our, it's like I'm minds. just not. That's not driving me. But, um, but at the same time, this conversation today <laughs> might just drive you that are watching to say, "Oh, we can never talk to our pastors again on Sunday morning." No, that's not what we're saying. We're no, just, not we're at just all. We're just having fun today. Um, over some of these conversations, because literally my goal is to m- do as many touch points with people as I can on Sunday. Right. Right. I mean, just being honest, I mean, just being able to say, hi, how are you? The, the question of how are you? I've, I've actually stopped asking the question because I've learned that people don't have the ability to give you just a two word answer. Well, um, or they don't tell you the truth. Right. I mean, and you know, they're lying. You know, a lot of times there's a band, uh, Casting Crowns. They wrote a song called Stained Glass Masquerade yeah. years yeah. and years ago. And this this whole the Stained Glass Masquerade is this idea that we go into church with this mask on our face. <laughs> Ironically, now we do. <laughs> In this day and age, we're actually wearing a mask. But um, no, we go into the, into church with this mask. And it, inevitably, you ask people how they're doing. Oh, I'm great. Reality is inside they are drowning in depression or drowning in right. their finances or whatever and they're anxious and whatever but this is how we answer because we think that's what everybody wants to hear they don't want to hear our real story well we do want to hear your real story we want to hear the real pain and hurts as pastors yeah so so like there's this i mean i could walk from from the doors to through the worship center um and not not kidding you I mean, this was this was not. Well, this is just one Sunday. I don't even know how long ago it was. Um, but I have a conversation over here with Pastor. I think I'm going to leave my leave my spouse. I've had it, hmm. and I'm like, uh, could you not have told me that like now? <laughs> because it always is followed up with like, what do I do? Yeah. Um, can you call me on that? I mean, that doesn't sound like the right response. Then I go over to the other side, and I already have that in my head. And you know, the boil person comes up and and does that. And then I'm thinking, this is this is awkward. But it happens week after week after week to where, I mean, one week you go in and you think, man, it's gonna be a great day, and you get a hug from one of your senior adults, and you you hear about their aches and pains, and which is you know, something that we want to have compassion on, you know, Mm -hmm. trying to help them be encouraged through all of that. But then you get hit with, you know what? I, I'm kicking my kid out of the house. Um, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with my kid. I'm kicking him out. Or, uh, the one that says in the same aisle actually is like, Hey, how'd your week go? Well, I found out I have cancer. Okay. Well, that's on me. Cause I asked. Right. Right. Um, but that's not a three minute conversation. Right. Um, at all. 
Um, but I do think uh, sometimes um, you get hit with those, hey, pastor. <laughs> okay, this is this is not even something I really like, but uh, pastor, can you pray for my cat? My cat died yesterday. No, it, it's a cat. And it's dead. And it's dead. Well, don't you think cats are in heaven? I got to go preach. It, it, this it, is it, a long theological it, it, conversation. It, 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 really, it really is. It's like, <laughs> maybe, that's, maybe that's a podcast, Our Cats in Heaven. I don't want to. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to just say cats are from the fall. I mean, well. but at the same time, now I know you cat people. It, it Cats are. They have a place Sean, somewhere. Sean, our friend Chantal's watching oh, this, and she's going to be mad gonna, if we ooh. say anything negative about cats. So, <laughs> um, but then you get you get some of those those people that you just they just come at you and go, uh, <laughs> "Pastor, I got to tell you, there's a lot of people that." And you're like X Y Z. Are you like are you serious? Okay, so that's why I have to close the door and go like, okay. Usually, ninety nine percent of the time, the a lot of people is like one. So I got the one that's flapping. I have another funny story. This didn't happen to me. It happened to a guy who, a pastor, a friend of mine, who he was there the day that I got saved. He he took me down to the altar. Um, he officiated my wedding with my wife. I mean, this guy has been in my life a long time, and he told me this story. And it <laughs> it's another one of those three minutes before service or right after service kind of uh, op, uh, conversations, but. Lady walks up to him and says, Pastor Adam, can you pray for my husband and I to get a new truck? And Adam already knew, just from knowing this family, that uh, the family had just gotten a new truck recently, you know, within the last year or so, a brand new, nice truck. And so his immediate reaction would be the same, I think, that you and I would have had. Did something happen to your truck? Like, what? Did you guys get an accident? Uh, the, cons- genuine, genuine concern, right? She says, no, no, um, we just, we really need a new truck. We, we really need to have a brand new truck. And so he's like, poor K. Like, because why? <laughs> tell, tell, elaborate for me. She's like, we just really want to have a new truck. My, my husband and I just have this desire to have a really nice new truck. Adam goes, no. No, I'm not going to pray for that. Well, why not? Um, Because you don't need it, and that's not what prayer is for. God is not a genie or a vending machine. (laughs) And if you want to go buy a new truck and you have the money, go buy the new truck. If you don't have the money, you shouldn't be buying a new truck. Mm -hmm. It's really that simple. (laughs) And I'll go preach. And then he got in trouble. Like, they went and ratted on him to the... the (laughs) senior pastor at the time and I mean, he didn't get in trouble but i mean it was like he should be praying like, come on people like so again i mean this was before a saturday night service i believe if i remember am remembering properly it was either before the saturday night or after saturday night service and uh just <laughs> what <laughs> i'm not gonna pray for that that's silly yep yep i mean it, it's one of those things where people just you just come out of the woodwork and Throw it at us. So we've talked about some of the more funny things that we've had somebody come and talk to us about. What are some of the more of the troubling? I mean, you, you kind of mentioned one, but what are some of the more troubling things that people have come to you and really knocked you off your game or, you know, it could have knocked you off your game with well, some things? Well, I, I think the comments of of pastor. Um, several people. Oh, yeah. I mean that that that's a game changer when they're, when they're speaking for other people. Yeah, that's a game changer because that's where the devil's going to work. I mean, huge, and and it's like I don't have time to decipher who. So you know, one of our questions, one of my questions is always, well, well, who? Well, can't give you names. Then I'm done. I mean, we're moving on. Um, walking to the stage. I mean, I mean, so that that kind of is a game changer because um, it can it can cause. For us as pastors, you know, it, we can, we've talked about this before. We can be self-conscious. We can be, you know. Well, your mind just starts going. It's like, like well, what are they saying behind my back? What are they, what are they talking about? You know, right. Who is yep. it? Is it one person? Is it f- four people? Right. Is it 50? You know, the, the other one that uh, will come at you is uh, <laughs> pastor. 
I, uh, I got something I need to say, but I don't want to say it now. Well, then why are you bothering me I right had, now? I had that on this last Sunday, actually. Yep. It's like I, I got it was I, after service, though. I, so. I don't I don't want to talk about it now. Well, and I, I did appreciate, by the way, when the person who did it to me this Sunday, what they wanted to talk to me about was definitely not something they should have shared in front of other people. So I was glad that yeah, they well, did that. So, yeah, well, that's good. Kudos, kudos, <laughs> kudos to, to them. them. Right. But you could have sent the note after service or on <laughs> Monday or sometime in the week. Right. Sure. Um but I think I think my heart really goes out to to those that just come walking past you and and just say, Pastor, um, it would be nice if you would like dress up a little bit on Sunday morning. <laughs> oh man, here <laughs> we go. We're going Seriously? down that road. <laughs> Seriously, or or Pastor, um, hey, do you know when the oil in the van needs to be changed? The church van needs to be changed. I haven't asked that question. Ah. Uh, or pastor, do you know who drove the church van last time? Because you know it's like, I'm like well now now it's real easy. No, well now it is easy. It's you. It's always your fault. <laughs> I'll be driving uh, it today, by the way. <laughs> so so it's, it's like those things. But you know, I, I think more on on the <laughs> on, on the the one of the funniest things that ever happened was I'm walking to the stage and this lady comes up and uh, she just kind of looks at me. She just kind of gets right right there and she does this little thing. And I mean, literally, it is like. Probably thirty seconds before, as a staff, we're walking out to to go on stage, and I'm doing call to that was my job that day is to do call to worship, and and uh, she goes and she she reaches for my ear, and I'm like, what? And I'm thinking, does my collar? You know, I mean, <laughs> and she pulled a hair off of my ear that was bugging her. Thanks. She's like, you got such hairy ears. And I was like, that's, I gotta go. That's an uncomfortable yeah, conversation. You don't, don't, no, leave, leave you, my. You have, see, now you're going to have a complex, <laughs> you your do. hairy ear, ear complex. Because now you're standing there going like, okay, today's word says this. <laughs> and then you're, you know, you get up to preach and you're just like, you want to check your zipper. You want to check everything. And <laughs> have anyway, you had that, the zipper what? down syndrome? On a, on a Sunday morning? Oh, I've been, I mean, I've noticed it. I stand there for worship sometimes. I do the little zipper check, and it's like, oh, good thing I checked today. <laughs> yeah, no, just being honest with you. People say, well, Pastor, don't you always pray? The biggest thing you should do before you preach is pray. It's like, mm-mm. The biggest thing I'm doing is checking my zipper. <laughs> yeah, especially now that we live stream, that oh, is not, yeah, you, you definitely yeah, don't want that. No, I, uh, <laughs> I didn't have this comment personally to me. It was about me, but it was not personally to me. I have lots of comments about you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> See, it's one of those things. If I told you that on Sunday morning, you'd be like, "Oh, well." And I, I'm self-conscious, so that would definitely I know, be I really that would, I could that have would fun with you on that. Oh yeah. No, I had a at one of my previous churches. Uh, my pastor had told me he shut it down when it had happened, but uh, somebody had said that uh, they thought it was inappropriate that I was wearing sandals on a Sunday morning on stage oh, leading yeah. worship. Yeah. And uh, or a ball cap. Uh, yeah, I've heard that. I haven't heard it here, although I've done it a couple times um, here. But um, I don't know that I wore a ball cap any other time. It might be just here that I've done that. But anyway, the the sandals thing was a was a problem for them. They they thought that uh, wearing sandals on on uh, on the stage is is passe. Because Jesus didn't wear it, sandals when he preached. Well, the the lead pastor, who I mean, I, again, I credit him to stand up for me, and you know go to my defense on this because it was stupid to begin with but he, he he tells the guy um name one person in the old testament or the new testament who wore shoes so why are shoes a biblical necessity on stage why do you care why are you looking at the worship pastor's feet you have an issue you need to work on that that's not his issue that's work, your issue work on that I did also have, this is great. So we had a guy, uh, uh, a reverend who was at the church, a retired guy, really awesome dude. Um, theology stuff that I didn't necessarily agree with on everything, you know, old time Nazarene guy. But uh, nevertheless, every time, without question, on a Sunday morning, he'd walk in. If I was dressed, in his opinion, appropriately, 
he would make a comment about, man, you're looking good today. Oh, I like yep. that tie today. Yeah. Man, you're looking good. Yep, let's be positive. And then, and then he would just, <laughs> if I was wearing, you know, I don't know, jeans and a T-shirt or whatever, he'd look at me and go, good morning. Yep. <laughs> And, and I knew exactly when he looked at me, I knew exactly yeah. what he was thinking. Oh, I'm man. not dressed right. Man. So that's that's a it, – it's getting less and less, I think, now as time is going on. Uh, I mean, don't take this the wrong way, but a lot of the people that think that way are no longer with us. Um, that generation is, is unfortunately disappearing um, with time. But, I mean, because the middle-agers don't care nearly as much. Right. So – it's just interesting, like, I don't know why people care what people wear. <laughs> just What about the one that, that somebody comes up to you right before service and goes, uh, Pastor, this is my last Sunday. I haven't had that one. Oh, man. I mean, literally, three minutes, you're walking to stage, and people say, Pastor, this is, my, this is, this is our last Sunday here. And they haven't prepared you for it previously. Exactly. You're like, uh, well, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, I, what do you want me to say? You know, at that at that moment, you know so. what you should do is you go go on stage and say, "Hey, this family's leaving." I Just know. FYI, that way everybody is with you on that. You know, some some churches have done that. It's well, weird. we won't mention churches though that that do that. But or or, uh, or how about the one that that says, uh, "Pastor, I just can't stay awake during your sermons. <laughs> just can't do it." Count me in the club. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're a good preacher. I like listening to you preach. Yeah, that's why you Although, don't. <laughs> it really seems like, honestly, over the last several weeks, I don't catch much of your sermons because I've been running around like a chicken with my head cut off after I walk off stage. Well, I you can't know, help you with that. Whether it's somebody's clicker not having ample <laughs> battery power and having to fix their batteries or live stream on Easter Sunday not working properly. I mean, it's just... It's, yeah. Technical these last, issues. These last few weeks has been more technical issues than I would have preferred. Have you ever had anybody tell you, hey, Pastor... If you would just send me your sermon notes, <laughs> I will proofread them for you. I've never had the proofread, but I have had several uh, times when I've, when I've preached. And I, I guess this is good. I mean, it, people wanting my sermon notes. And you and I kind of are similar in that if somebody tried to read our stuff that we actually use when we preach... It's like a mind map. You know, that that should be a podcast. I should show people what my mind map looks like that what I'm looking at on Sunday morning. It's, if you ever watch if you're if you're a fan of TikTok, there are lots of TikTok videos of like uh husband asks where do you want to go to eat and then it's like the wife's answer and it's and then you decide. <laughs> like that's yeah. the husband has to decide, right? Um your sermons are kind of the same way. You you have a starting point. And you have an yep. ending point, but how you Sometimes how you, you get the there, it's not a straight line. Right. <laughs> we'll try to put that in writing. It may look more like a curly cue. <laughs> so I'm just saying, you know, you, you have this person. Give me your sermon notes. Or give me give me your do you do you manuscript? Because I would love to proofread that. It's like, why? <laughs> no. Sit there and listen. I don't know why. First of all, my my response to that is Number one, I don't want you knowing what I'm going to say before I say it, because then it doesn't have the power or the effect of when I say it. But number two, there's lots of reasons. Yeah. I, why do you want to proofread? Like, what does it matter? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, do you proofread my sermons? Yours? How would I do such a thing? I'm just asking for, for our viewers. Oh. For sure. oh As my oh, boss, I, I do you, you proofread my, I my get sermons? You. Well, I give you the topic, I give you the scripture, and I give you the manuscript. All you have to do is read it. That's not true at okay. all. Okay. None, right. of, none of that is true. <laughs> so. Oh, well. Yeah. Okay, sometimes you give me a topic. I don't, oh, actually. Actually, I don't think I have you. When I've preached, I don't think you've I given me so. a topic to this no. point. I, I did. I, I, Sardis. Uh, well, yeah, but I haven't done that one yet. So. No. And I don't, That's think a long I don't think you're going to. I think I changed on you already. <laughs> well, it's already. <laughs> the mind like, map has done this. It's, it's already gone like seven or eight <laughs> months later than I was supposed to do it anyway. Right. Because so. right. things change <laughs> in the life right. of the church. So. Right. Well, and, so, anyway. so again, there, there, are, there are, again, these funny, not so funny, but kind of just uh, stories. But there are painful stories, and I don't know how there many are. of them you want to dive into. But um, I know for me, one of the harder things is when uh, I've had a uh, person in the church come up to me and um, not just say something hurtful to me, but say something hurtful about my family or to my mm -hmm. fa towards my family. 
and that's that's when you know really i mean i can honestly say it knocked me off my game uh this gentleman walked up to me and we had been promoting a anniversary uh party for them uh him and his wife they were having their 50th anniversary that year or whatever and so for several weeks we had promoted it to the church everybody invited come into the church and celebrate this this family's 50th anniversary blah 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 well it was the sunday before uh this party and uh he walked up to me and it was I, was I had my guitar on and I was in the back of the sanctuary getting ready to walk down the aisle to go up to the stage. And uh, he said, Pastor, can I stop you for a second? I'm like, OK, uh, what, what can I do for you? And he said, well, you, you know, we have our, our party next Saturday. Yep, sure do. Can you make sure that it gets promoted on stage again? It's like, absolutely. I will make sure we do that today. I think it's already in the plan. So we'll, we'll do that. And uh, he said, before you before you go. I just want you to know, uh, you and your family are not invited. Uh, you are not our friends. You don't get to come. Ouch. That was, that was rough. That was rough. Especially because, yep. like, to that point, I had never had a negative con- negative interaction with this gentleman before, uh, personally. Um, all of my other interactions with him had been warm, I guess. I mean, not negative. And so I it took me a second to like gather my thoughts, like what just happened? <laughs> Cause I had never had anyone to talk to me that way before. Um, certainly not in church. Um, you know, some pastors generally have some monicum of respect that they're given. So that was a little weird to me. And then I walk up front and the other pastor, ironically, whose name was Eric, um, he, he looks at me and he could tell, and I think you would know this if something like this happened to me here, he looked at me and he knew something was wrong. Like he could just see it on my face that something had happened. I had probably had a tear on my eye or whatever. And, uh, and I, he's like, what's, what's wrong? I was like, I'll, I'll tell you later. He's like, no, 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 no. Tell me now. Service is not important right now. You need to tell me what's going on. So I told him and his face got bright red. Like he was so angry. Uh, that gentleman was not in the church the next week because of the conversation that the senior pastor had with him. But yeah, I mean, imagine imagine being a pastor, yeah. getting ready to go on stage and having to deal with that. You know, the, the thing that uh, I think does hurt is when people will use our, our families, right, right before service. Um, so, so those are some of the more hurtful things that, that come. Not really necessarily throws your game off, but, I mean, we're men and we, you know, we want to protect our women. But people in the church, for some reason, think sometimes that, and pastors, if there's a pastor watching this, you'll understand this, they'll, they'll go to your spouse to complain or throw darts mm. at yeah. us as pastors as if our wives are the shield that's supposed to catch those darts, right? And uh, and so when you walk in, and you, you can tell when there's something wrong with your wife. Oh, yeah. And it's literally seconds before stage goes live and uh it's like what do you do with that mm. um you know so the enemy uses uses that um so when what i've what i've had to learn and maybe you're still learning this is when people ask um hey pastor can i stop you for a moment you know you really can't right now i'm getting ready for service um so I, i'm kind of i'm kind of laying the card out there if you ever approach me with that phrase you're not getting my time um, make an appointment um, yeah because it's never ever been anything positive that comes out of out of those things um uh, so so we're just trying to we're just trying to <laughs> let a, you, you know on just our, on our hearts well, a little bit but. and you speak of the wife i i had a, a guy who told my wife um before service i was doing my thing right he, he goes up to my wife when i'm not around um when i was in the back at the sound booth or whatever he goes up to my wife and he says you're not dressed appropriately for church. All right. This is not appropriate. You need to go change. First of all, the guy's not a board member. He's not a pastor. Not my lead pastor. And more importantly, come talk to me about my wife. Do not go talk to my wife like that. And so my wife, my wife's a sensitive flower. Um, she, she was bawling and whatever, but Again, I mean, it's it's. These are things that, again, knock us off our game is probably the wrong phrase, but I mean, it. It will rock a pastor 
when these sorts of things happen right before services. We're trying to focus on leading worship, preaching God's word, um, you know, relating to our people, all those things. And so I guess the, me- the moral of the story is think before you talk. Well, I mean, that, that's that's part of it. But I think where I, I'd like to wrap it up today is is on on our, our theme verse of Hebrews 12, two. Um, mm-hmm. You know, which says, which talks about um, our whole filtered uh, theme for the year um, to where as a pastor, um, there are Sundays where I'm not with the congregation before service. Mm-hmm. Um, Easter was a great example of that. I did not put myself out there in front of people before um, how we dramatized Easter. Same thing with um, Good Friday. In, in Good Friday. Because to be laser focused, you just you just can't you just can't do that. Um, but that gets interpreted a lot of times that well, pastor is just not personable. Pastor is not approachable. Pastor can't be contacted. Pastor is above. He's on a pedestal. He thinks he's better than. And it's none of that. Right. It's everything we just talked about. The reasons why we can't sometimes put ourselves out there before people. Because the message that we have to give is so heavy that I don't want to give the devil a foothold right. or any room for distraction. And the one thing that the devil's going to use every Sunday against us is our people. Well, and the reality is, too, I mean, just to be quite honest, I mean, most of the time our people, if you're listening and you're from Herman As, you probably don't even know this. Sometimes you're you're we know your intent is not to let the devil have a foothold. But again, that's why, right. you know, thinking, thinking about where we're at. And that's why we're talking about this. Right. Knowing where we're at on a Sunday morning is important for you to know that way. And again, if you don't go to our church, if you go to another church, um, this is important information to know about your pastors because uh, you don't, I, I would imagine <laughs> you don't want the devil having a foothold for us. Some people do. I mean, let's just be real. Some, some people want to be used. Um, that way. Oh, um, some people just want to be jerks. I mean, that's just the reality of but it, right? But honestly, though, I mean, that's a good point, because I, I don't believe that people, at, at least at our church, for the most part, they don't come with an evil intent or any no. venom. Um, you're just being you, and and we love that. Yeah. Um, but but I can't always be I can't always be there for that. It goes right? back to the cliche: there's a time and place for everything, and and just pick and pick your spots. I mean, right. again, I, I think for to bring it back home to Hermnaz, um, as as we try to do every podcast if we can, um, we said this at the beginning: we as your pastors here at Hermnaz, I mean, we we are more than happy to have an appointment with you. Um, I, I I mean, I don't get nearly the volume of appointments that you do. Um, most of the time, my appointments center around my two ministry areas, um, not usually outside of that too much. But I mean, if you if you want to contact me and I'm not, you know, you're not a teen or you're not a you know parent or a grandparent of my teens. Or if you're not on the worship ministry or in the worship ministry, that doesn't mean you can't get a hold of me. I'm more than happy to talk to anybody in our church. I'm a pastor to everybody, not just the teens. But um, same is true for you. I mean, you're the f- shepherd of our whole flock, you know, from oldest to youngest babies and up, but, um, we're more than happy to have a conversation and we'll work around your schedule to a certain extent. Right. I mean, we're, we're, sure. we're available to you. Um, yeah, without, without any doubt. And, and I love our church because our church it, it doesn't have a lot of the, I don't know, I'll say, I'll say typical church anger mentality. Yeah, we don't have the dra- We don't have a lot of the lot drama of that the, some other churches yeah, that we've drama. been at. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, um, man, we want to do our best. Yeah. In order to do our best, sometimes we have to just sit back and and hem ourselves in. You know, scripture talks <laughs> about hemming, having the Lord hem us in. He protects us in the front, the back, and the sides, the top, and the bottom. Um, and sometimes we do just have to close the door. Yeah. Sometimes we got to take responsibility as pastors in order to give our people the best. Recognize that I can't go over there because or there because I just I I need this three minutes. I need yeah. the three minutes to to focus. I need the fifteen minutes before church to to focus. And it's not to prayer. If I'm not prayed up before I come to church on Sunday, then I haven't done my best already. Sure. Um, what I need to do is stay 
focused and not be distracted um, sometimes. Um, but filtering through Hebrews 12, 2, which says, um, keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus, mm. who is a perfecter of our faith. And what are we preaching on Sunday? If it's through the word, if it's through scripture, if it's through prayer, it's how to perfect our faith. Right. right. It's how to lead us to the perfecter of our faith. And the only way to do that is to keep our eyes on Jesus. And if the leadership is not having their eyes on Jesus, um, it's a it's a train wreck just waiting to happen. So, um, you know, whatever church you go to, just be mindful that when you come into the house to worship on Sunday morning, um, have the freedom to talk to people, have freedom to talk to pastors. But be um it's not it's not time for the agenda i guess that's the simplest way to put it it's not time to to make an appointment to ask specific questions it's it's a time to interact to engage to love to encourage to support um to worship jesus i mean that's really what it comes down to worship yeah. jesus and, and and to save the rest of that for you know another another time right um it, it, even in things like uh, and i've been debating if i should even bring this up today or not but but here's how real it is for for us. Um, uh, Easter Sunday morning, the close of the close of Easter Sunday morning, um, being uh, confronted by somebody in church to say, Pastor, I'm sure God talks to you. But I don't think he spoke to you about how to present Easter this year. Hmm. I mean, literally, I've been out of the pulpit now for about 45 seconds. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, the, and the enemy is just like right there. Right. Now, I don't think this person is vindictive. I don't think they're angry. I just don't think they have a filter. And I had to double my filter. You know, we won't go down the double, wear the double mask and all of that. But, 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 but I, had to, <laughs> I, I, had to, I had to double up. And, and I had to put that hedge around me with a padlock on it at that moment because I could have seriously gone off on them. sure and and instead or, or just internalized it and gotten really you know down on yourself yeah and, and, in, and instead i'm like okay i have to recognize that so that's part of our job is recognizing well and and, and, that. and no we we understand too even in a negative comment there's some truth and so we we look for the truth in any statement um but at the same time we have to be very careful to protect ourselves from the enemies right because we have a spiritual claws. life Right. Right. We have a spiritual heart. Right. And we've got to keep that pure. So, hey, this is a good conversation. I'm glad we had it. Um, I've got a, I mean, we've got a whole list of other stories to, oh, yeah. to, to tell. But whether it's somebody coming in the three minute pre, pre stage to say they have cancer mm. or that they're getting a divorce or that this is our last Sunday here um, or, hey, pastor, I've got a boil or, hey, pastor, um, I pray for you and your family this week. Um, wherever that falls in that three minute stage, we're, we're having just, a baby, we're having a baby <laughs> or, or, Hey, you know what? We just found out our, our baby uh, doesn't have a heartbeat. Oh. I mean, that, that, that's a hard one before church. Yeah. Right. So not to steal the thunder and joy of, Hey, we're having a baby, but it right. does go both ways. And sometimes it's on both sides of the sanctuary at the same time. That literally happened. We're having a baby. Our baby doesn't have a heartbeat. Hmm. And that's, that all happens within about five minutes before stage time. Um, which then what does a pastor do? We can't say that things because well family doesn't know we're having a baby and family doesn't know our baby is dead i mean so what do, what do we do with that um i mean so that rattles around so anyway um <laughs> just know that uh if you want to uh i don't know walk away from this with a a sense of encouragement be encouraged to do this filter everything that happens in your day through the eyes of jesus keep your eyes on jesus chase jesus and uh and you you will have just a radical day and uh, so um, anyway, love your church, love your pastors, wherever you go to church, whether it's here, we know we love you and we know you love us, but, uh, but be an encouragement. What do we got for next week? Next week. Uh, you know, when are we doing the live show? Uh, you know, I, I'm ready whenever you are. I think we just need to do we have a place. Yeah. I think we need to nail down place and then we're ready to go. Yeah. So just, just be aware live show could be coming next week. It could be coming the week after that or sometime very soon. Um, but if you're a Spotify listener or an iTunes listener, you can't see us right now, but you're listening. Uh, just know that if we do a live show, it, 
may not be there right away at 10 o'clock. Uh, it's going to take some time for us to load that in um, so that Spotify and iTunes uh, have that and Google Podcast or whatever. Um, but uh, if you're watching, uh, if you haven't watched us before, that would be a great time to yeah. tune in and, and watch us live. Um, you know, so that, uh, you can, you can see us as we go. Um, and we'll let you know, uh, once we've nailed down a place where we're going to be, and I don't know that we can have a bunch of people show up, but if, you know, some people want to come and have coffee with us, every one of you watching, there's room for you to show up. There's, hey, how we might have like, I don't know, five or 10. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know who actually watches live, but, uh, I know a lot of people watch. It's just matter yeah, not of when <laughs> um but yeah so uh do we know what we're going to talk about next no week? i don't i don't know what do you want to talk about god god's usually a pretty good answer i i don't know <laughs> so we'll figure out what we're gonna do um uh, and uh figure out where we're gonna be so you we'll, know, we'll let you know the morning burrito is all about start your day right start your day with with the word start your day with the lord and obviously we haven't started the day with a burrito for a while um, no, we have not. But uh, but we need to get back to the burrito because I'm kind of I'm kind of hungry this morning. I am a little hungry right. this morning. Thank you guys. We'll see you next time on the Morning Burrito Enjoy. podcast. <laughs>